Okay. Um, I will not use the rostrum because it's very, very too formal. Uh, selamat siang, bapak-bapak, ibu-ibu. Um, thank you for coming this session. Uh, I'll try to make this short. Uh, usually by alphabetical order, it should be India go first, right? But then India has a secret video at the end of the show. So I don't want to spoil that, so I will go first, right? Okay, in Indonesia, I think all of you know, 250 million uh, population. And yearly, we only get 3 million. That's only 1%. So imagine if you could push the barrier to 2%, that's the, that's the amount of uh, visitors that we can actually tap from Indonesia. Right. So this slide, uh, I just wanted to uh, point to you uh, uh, some uh, key things. You already know that we are the top source market. We were able to edge out uh, China towards the end of last year. And uh, because we were, we, were, we were really behind by quite a big margin, but somehow or another, some miracle happened uh, in November and December, especially in the month of December. Look at that. 330,000 Indonesians visited us. That is the highest ever recorded in our history since we started collecting visitor statistics. Um, the pink zone are actually your peak travel months. But this year, we're going to have a bit of a problem because why? You all know the Lebaran period is moving nearer and nearer towards the June holidays. So usually, it always happens in like August. Now, it's drawing closer to June. So we're very likely to miss probably half a peak of travel, uh, a travel peak in the month of June and July. Uh, what's, um, what's satisfying is that uh, even though uh, we get a very good uh, VA visitor arrival increase of 6%, but you look at the TR, which means people are spending more. When TR is double or much more than VA, we should be very happy because people are actually spending more in Singapore. Right. Um, okay. I'll move on to the next slide. Uh, where are the Indonesian visitors coming from? Uh, largely Jakarta, and you see, you can see that Jakarta outstrips everybody. That's why, for the purpose of uh, tiering, we always say Jakarta is tier one, because Surabaya, even it is a big market, it's very far away. Uh, likewise, um, for the other um, tier two cities, so it goes by Surabaya, Medan, Bandung, and Bali, which we have never been casting our eyes on. We have done something this year with Singapore Airlines. We've done a travel fair with them. We supported them. And we are actually quite surprised with the kind of uh, results that we get because we do see Balinese, actual local Balinese who are actually travelling. So it's not your expatriates, which we always thought it is. Um, Semarang, Palembang, Makassar. Now, Makassar is another key uh, city which we will also be focusing our efforts in uh, this year, which we have never been casting our eyes on. All these cities have direct um, air access. So if you look at the breakdown of city, because um, you all know that a lot of people, uh, for some reasons, they do not want to review where they come from. So they always put others or unstated. So for those that we have uh, been able to um, determine where they come from, 24% are actually from tier two cities, whereas 46 are from Jakarta. So you can see that big gap. Uh, what's, uh, what's good is that the tier two cities are actually now outpacing the growth uh, because we, we are seeing that uh, more first year, more, more first time travelers are actually coming up from the tier two cities. But again, they are a bit more budget, a bit more uh, spending power may not be so great. So um, the hotel selections would be, you know, uh, dependent on what kind of budget they have. But I do know that we now have got quite a number of three to four star or three star uh, hotels. Uh, and this actually fueling the kind of uh, interest in Singapore whom previously they may not have the propensity to actually consider Singapore because in their mindset, Singapore is expensive. Yep. But now we do have some, some good options because hotel is one of the key considerations when they travel because a lot of LCCs, air, airlines are just, you know, are giving a lot of promo fare. So hotel now is actually not quite a big consideration for them. Uh, and we also very, we already, we always, put our eyes on air arrival because air arrivals are the type of visitors that we want. We want. So from sea arrival and land arrivals, they are good numbers, but um, these are probably not the higher spending ones. So the air arrival, look at tier two cities. They're actually also growing faster than, <coughs> than that of Jakarta. <coughs> Just want to highlight some of, the, some of the things that we did last year. Last year, within one year, we stormed through six cities, all tier two cities, starting from Bandung, 
Semarang, Surabaya, Medan, Pekembarung, Palembang. I, some of you have followed us through the, through the roadshow. It's both a B2B session followed by a three-day intensive B2C travel fair. And Indonesians like travel fairs. They plan their travel during the time when there's a travel fair going on. So all airlines, almost all airlines would have travel fairs and some NTOs like STB who really started doing travel fairs and we get very good results. So all in, we have so, I think those statistics you can read for yourself. Basically, it is almost, it's quite 360 kind of engagement among all uh, relevant trade within uh, Indonesia and also Singapore. We have got quite a number of Singapore partners following us through the show. And what, what is very satisfying is that these travel fairs actually generate quite a lot of sales, right? Um, and beyond that, we also make sure that we, we maximize our media, media coverage. We do a lot of social engagement. And at the fair itself, we actually directly touch our customers, 200,000 of them. Yep. Okay, um, cruise is getting very popular among Indonesians. Um, I, can, I can name the, the cruise liners because these are the cruise liners that are active in, in Indonesia, Costa, RCI, Princess. Yep. So what we did was that we actually uh, supported a Singapore cruise, a standalone Singapore cruise travel fair uh, over two days and, <clears throat> and the result shows by itself. 192 cabins sold. Not a bad, not a bad results for the first time ever trying to do a, a fair like this. And we got the support of Singapore Airlines and, and those are the numbers that we see. Oops, sorry. Um, <clears throat> another, another phenomenon that we are seeing now is that uh, you get to see more and more incentive groups coming from Indonesia and they come in big, big numbers. Uh, I think that one of the reasons is because Previously, we had to think of uh, coming to Singapore for incentive trip. The hotels is a big uh, factor. But again, I'm not saying that the, the, group, the good groups are not coming to Singapore, but the more budget ones, the big groups, they find Singapore a viable option because again, the three stars, slightly three stars hotels, we have quite plenty of them. So they are really packing the rooms. So some of you will be smiling away when I mention about three star, right? So you all know who you are. Yeah, because... For me now, my pipeline of projects, pipeline of uh, incentive groups is right up to October and I get all these groups and I know actually what hotels are they, are they choosing. So last year, we of course exceeded our target. We had 26 groups. Now these groups are groups, known groups that we actually go out actively to secure. Uh, there are many groups who come naturally or those groups have come because um, they've decided there's no need for me to influence them. Um, uh, I think some of you are, are, are familiar with what is BIS, what is STARS. Later on, I'll, I'll touch on that. Uh, some notable groups, you see, 800 packs, 400 packs, 300 packs. Yeah, just coming on stream quite quickly. Um, another phenomenon is M&I on cruise. They are also packing up the ships. Good for, good for numbers, but not so good for spending because they just go straight to the ships. So we've got to play a very balancing act here. Um, Okay, I'm doing okay for time. Um, and just sharing with you some of this um, uh, um, engagement that we do uh, to, to ensure that we continue to sell destination uh, subtly. Um, we invested in this production. Um, we had the 30 million views as of today, from September until now. So another, another series of it is coming on stream. Um, next, uh, social media activation. Uh, you see here, these are our two... Uh, this is our... So-called our key opinion leader is a, is a destination, almost a destination ambassador. Um, so we, we created some kind of social engagement with another celebrity family. So we did this engagement on, on, on online and it does give us quite a bit of uh, uh, results based on those um, data that we have, uh, analytics that we collected. This is just to show you some of the things that we do. Um, again, uh, we are very... We are very we're very popular, Singapore is a very popular destination to uh, consume our events. I think all of you know Coplay last week, two weeks ago. The Indonesian traffic, the Indonesian uh, attendance is phenomenally high, yeah? And actually, 20% of all ticket holders are Indonesians. And I do know friends who actually bought their air tickets before even getting their show tickets. Yeah, that's how, that's, that shows how popular Singapore is because it's very convenient for them to get to 
us. So these are a series of things that we do. We do print ad to, 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 to promote all our events, or all our key events, and we also do a lot of social content seeding uh, to web videos and uh, advertorials. A, a whole, se a whole uh, gamut of uh, uh, offerings that we actually feature. So, market overview. Um, we do think, and from reports, 2017 looks to outperform 2016. When the economy is operating about five, it's okay. If it's above five, they are good. So this likely this year they will perform, perform about 5.2 percent. So um, economy-wise, we are quite safe. Um, uh, consumer confidence remains very strong, uh, and all, all of you know that rupiah has uh, strengthened quite a bit and has been very stable for the past few months. Um, outbound travel remains very strong. You all heard about tax and amnesty. Uh, I we do not think that that will actually impact a lot on outbound travel. And from based on all, based on reports from other NTOs or other destinations, outbound travel to those destinations are still very strong, especially Japan and Korea. And like I said, Indonesians like travel fares. So you see every travel fares, overwhelming crowd. At Singapore Airlines travel fair in Jakarta, they sold almost 20,000 tickets. Three days, 20,000 tickets. In Surabaya was about 7,500, 8,000 tickets. So you can just see how people are really waiting, queuing to get those um, uh, very special promotional fares. Um, one other, uh, what you call, one other, uh, one other thing that uh, traditional travel agents do face is the competition from OTA. And this is very real because OTA, like Traveloka, uh, they have a lot of marketing budget. So OTA, uh, tra traditional travel agents are f feeling the, the pressure. But Indonesians, they like to be pampered. So they like to be gotten tickets at the airport, like the tickets to be sent to them. They like to be serviced. So that's the, the kind of mindset of uh, travel agents. So travel agents still play a very pivotal role in, 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 the, in, in, the, uh, in the Indonesian um, eco travel ecosystem. Our key focus for this year would obviously be um, both Tier 1 and Tier 2. Um, tier 1 being uh, being Jakarta and then Tier 2 being Surabaya, Medan, Bandung and the rest. Uh, we, will make, we will be making sure that the cruise remains a very uh, important part of our, uh, our, our efforts. At the same time, we want to grow the Tier 2 cities. And, um, and the other part is uh, we are actually quite um, uh, active in trying to, uh, to, to get more and more meeting and incentive groups because these are actually a bit higher yield uh, kind of customers that we we want to secure for Singapore. Right, some upcoming plans in 2017. Um, as you already heard, uh, it's uh, second half of 2017. Uh, a small office outfit that will look after Makassar, Bali, um, Surabaya, and Malang, and Gresik, and those cities around Surabaya. Right. Um, we will also be doing another filming of an uh, upcoming Indonesian singer. We hope to hit the same level of uh, viewership as we have successfully been with Risky Fabian. Um, and come May this year, we will also be holding a uh, CIA training uh, for Indonesia. Pan-Indonesian agents will all be brought to Indonesia, uh, to Jakarta to attend. And uh, Malaysian trade partners will also be joining us. In fact, um, just before the end of March, we did one uh, Mice Roadshow in Jakarta, which are not featured here. I think we brought in about um, close to 30 partners from uh, uh, Singapore. To, uh, for our first ever, <coughs> first ever B2B session, my session in Jakarta. Um, next year, I rather did, uh, sorry. <coughs> this year we would be looking at <coughs> first timer promotions, and we will be, we will be looking, doing, we will be thinking of doing this program in tier two cities, and probably with um, uh, with a suitable airline that can actually try to encourage first timer whose passport is still empty or who has never had a Singapore stamp passport, uh, Singapore stamp on it. So we were trying to encourage them to visit Singapore and that requires support from the airlines, from the hotels and also from um, attraction partners who will be able to pull together some of these good deals and we will go out and hunt for these new customers. Um, we are looking to, to do a partnership with, B sorry, with BCA, the leading consumer bank. Um, uh, to do some promotion on spending. They already have a very good program and they have uh, long-standing uh, partners, uh, uh, Singapore partners with them. But we want to expand that list of merchants so that when you go to Singapore, don't forget the, the bank, the, the card, because it's synonymous of going to Singapore. 
So that's one program we're doing. Um, sorry, I keep clicking wrongly. This one, um, we will be ro rolling out our second series of, or rather our series of roadshow for 2017. In fact, we just completed two roadshows, uh, two, uh, two cities in the, towards end of March and starting of April. We went to Palembang, we went to Medant. We sold almost 4,000 packs in terms of conversion. So I think Travel Fest does work. And thank you very much. CAG has always been supporting us uh, with their marketing support and their CDV. You all know what CDV, right? Anybody know what CDV? Nobody knows CDV? Yeah. CDV is a Changi Dollar Voucher. Everybody swear by it. Every Indonesian swear by it. Changi Dollar Voucher. They know it by heart. They will always come, got CDV or not for your travel fare. So the reason why they buy in travel fare is because we put together value adds. We put together good value adds. Of course, we're not trying to sell our destination for a song. But we know their psyche. We make sure we use that platform to convert sales and also to bring my destination closer to them. Because without that, we keep doing advertising. We are really not bringing the destination to them. Because I quote, my, one of my board members says, you need to be close to your customers. And travel fare is the best way to be actually touching close to your customers. Because you don't do that, we keep doing advertising. Uh, that may not be the best way uh, to amplify uh, our awareness of our destination. Um, Come, um, sorry, come August, September, two travel, uh, two travel fair uh, key periods in Indonesia. It's always March, April selling for Lebaran. Lebaran is the high raya season. And then August, September selling for the year end travel. So in the month of August, September, you, there will be a very big Singapore airline travel fair, which is joint collaboration with BCA. That fair is, it just takes 10 minutes for this carpet to fill up totally. Five, start of the fair, you take a photo. 10 minutes later, you take a photo. The entire mall is, you can't see the carpet. That's, that's how popular these fairs are. So we will be leveraging on this and one, we want to feature a cruise pavilion. Yep, a Singapore cruise pavilion to promote cruises, fly cruise, and also stay over, uh, stay over program on route for cruise. <clears throat> Uh, I mentioned we are very, very um, uh, aggressive in, in, in the area of mice. So we already have three um, schemes. The B in Singapore scheme, a business event in Singapore scheme, that's BIS. STARS is actually a special travel agent or reward scheme that we reward the travel agent for clinching the group. And then INSPIRE is another scheme whereby, whereby we trigger smaller groups that may not, uh, may not uh, what you call, uh, qualify for the grant scheme. So it's all comprehensive. We try to make sure that no group will turn down Singapore. Um, these, are the flyers that, these are the flyers that we've developed. Um, the details I won't go through. If you're not clear, you can come to see me. I can run through it with you, especially for those DMCs here. Uh, just January, we had the 800 packs uh, group from Adira. Uh, that's how, that's the kind of size of groups that we are actually getting. And as I speak now in April, there are two big groups, 1,002 each. They are already confirmed for Singapore. So, this, so the M&I traffic is something that uh, you all may want to be out on the radar. Right, that's all for my presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Sridhar. Uh, I'm in the Mumbai office of STB. So let me just quickly run through reaching out to secondary city, cities and consumer segments in India. Uh, so this is the agenda. I'll just give you a quick overview. So last year, we did 1.1 million visitors uh, from India to Singapore, which was an 8% increase, placing it the fourth largest. You don't have to take all these pictures. Singapore Tourism Board, very efficient. You're going to get this deck of slides. <laughs> if you have registered, your email IDs are with us, you will get this deck of slides. So you can still get your photos and send WhatsApp, that's fine, but you are going to get this deck of slides, yeah? Uh, tourism receipts, we did uh, for the first nine months, $1.125 million or $1.1 billion. Uh, what's a 37% increase? What's important, India is the number one cruise market for Singapore, which was a 29% increase over the previous year. Uh, and we continue to have a huge impact on cruise travel. So as Genting Dream is coming to uh, home port in Singapore, there's going to be a big ship and there's going to be a big uh, motivation for us to bring more cruise passengers. 
per capita expenditure, uh, there was a growth as well, 26%. What's important that I wanted to highlight, there was a 7% growth from the 12 secondary cities. So the theme of today's presentation, why the secondary cities, why tier two cities. So you can see the 7% increases from tier two cities. Some activities we did last year, so if you're here for uh, my chief executive's presentation earlier in the day, uh, we did a Badrinath Kidulania movie. Uh, and this collaboration alone had given us a lot of mileage for the first quarter. So um, branded content last year, we were fortunate to have actually two Bollywood movies. The Dear Zindahi, we had about seven minutes of airtime, and we used that seven minutes to say as if the whole <laughs> movie was Singapore, actually not. But we had a Dear Zindahi promotion, but more importantly, we had the Badrinath Kidulania movie uh, where we had uh, that movie doing very well at the box office and our own version of the uh, Tama Tama Love from Singapore, which is what I'll play at the end of the whole presentation and uh, uh, discussion today. Uh, that went viral and that got us more than one million uh, hits on YouTube. So branded content, very good. Second, partnerships. Uh, we are big on partnerships in India. It's a huge country. Um, actually, I'm supposed to start the presentation by saying Vanakam, Vandanam, Namaskar, because that's all these languages in India, right? So if you are thinking that you can go to India and talk in one language and that's Hindi, no, the Tamil fellas in down south or the Telugu fellas down south will be not saying, I don't understand what you're saying, or the Gujarati. So it's a big country. Partners, very important to amplify our messaging. Uh, we have worked with uh, Flight Shop and Travel Tours. The Travel Tours is in the room. Flight Shop and Travel Tours is uh, headed by Shravan and we will talk more about how the partnerships work. Uh, we had a cruise partnership, we had Gainwell, Gainwell at the bottom. This is a Calcutta regional player, so we wanted to go and do partnerships also by region. This was an entire pr uh, promotion with Singapore Airlines. Three celebrations, one city, Singapore. Christmas, sorry, Diwali, Christmas, Chinese New Year. Throughout that period, you can come to Singapore, have fun celebrating in Singapore. Uh, trade engagement activities, we have done Sate, we did a four-city roadshow, Delhi, then Mumbai, De uh, Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, Chennai. Uh, last year, we did a Colombo plus five-city roadshow. So I've upped the game for the team this year, and they're not uh, sort of liking me for it, but uh, <laughs> we are doing a Colombo plus six cities this year, which I'll announce in a short while. So we have been doing a lot of uh, trade engagements, and I'm very, very happy that all of you are supporting this in a big way. We had a record 45 uh, Singapore stakeholders at the recent Four City Tier 1 Roadshow. Cruise, again, cruise is very important as I've just mentioned. Uh, we have done cruise promotion with Thomas Cook, a key player. Uh, importantly, just I just finished it on the last day of the financial year, 30, 31st of March. They were asking me why, because I wanted to do it in the last financial year. So on 31st of March, we had the India Cruise Forum where we actually, the main announcement was clear accreditation training program for the very first time. Uh, the first Asian city or country to get it was India. So we have launched that, and then they're going to launch it for Indonesia quite soon, right? So clear is now launched in uh, India. Um, MICE, MICE is very, very important. Uh, incentive travel out of India is huge business. Um, big, good numbers from last year, we had, uh, we had looked at all the trade feedback that's come back and we have done a third version of Inspire. Inspire is actually in Singapore incentives and rewards program to incentivize the incentive travelers to come to Singapore. So what we have done is we've actually lowered the number of packs who are eligible, 50 to 200 packs. Originally it was higher than that. Now this makes it possible that even tier two cities with smaller groups can now be more eligible for this. So this is huge for, for promoting incentive travel. These are my current six partners in the incentive travel space. Market overview. Demonetization, I think all of you would have known. There was a withdrawal of 500 rupees and 1,000 rupees uh, last year. It was practically yanking the carpet out, out of your, under your feet. Because one day morning, you wake up to the news, 500 rupees and 1,000 rupees are no longer going to be legal tender within a sh very short space of time. So I literally had to queue up for my own <laughs> rupees and I think our slogan and all, when you all came in, you also experienced the delights of demonetization. But it didn't impact travel as much as we thought it would. So it rebounded very quickly, and the consumer sentiments are very good. Interestingly, uh, digitization has also then made it digital paying is now on the rise. That also makes it very convenient for a lot of us to think through how are we going to make 
the most out of this push towards uh, less cash. So uh, the Prime Minister of the country has said it is not cashless, but less, less cash society, and that's where India is headed. Growth, uh, GDP growth projection, 7.5%, very good for us. India is on a steady speed. They are growing their cities, they are growing their economy. Infrastructure is developing, they are spending uh, declared US $10 billion on development of travel infrastructure uh, over the next seven years. So a large aviation market is developing, and Chinkiet and, and team will be very interested to figure out how are we going to leverage on some of this. Uh, travel service, okay, the taxes, um, service tax again, suddenly in January there was an announcement, service tax is moving from 4 or 5% to 9%, so that had an impact, and now the bigger whammy that we are all sort of cautious about is there's uncertainty about GST to be implemented in July, where people are saying it's going to be double digit uh, in, uh, tax, so we are cautiously waiting to see what's going to happen and how is it going to impact travel. Looking eastwards, U.S. security fears in Europe, travel trade feedback has been, there's a genuine shift towards eastwards travel, right? So Southeast Asia travel, Australia, New Zealand, very important uh, cities of choice. And it is also helpful that there are depreciating currency and lower hotel rates making an increased appeal for these cities among the Indian tourists. Increased utilization of technology, rise of mobile first. India is probably one of the most well-connected cities, uh, sorry, countries that's uh, looking at mobile phones. So even a farmer somewhere in remote part of India will have a mobile phone on him and it's probably a smartphone too, right? And there's a new entrant in the market. Uh, the richest Indian, Mr. Ambani, has opened up Jio uh, and he's aggressively, right, leveling the playing field, right? So Airtel used to be the number one telco uh, and then Idea and Vodafone merged becoming number one. Airtel is number two, but Jio is fast catching up. So there's going to be a sort of a, a heated war for consumers and mobile is going to go through the sky very soon. And how do we penetrate? How do we manage that uh, that's coming up? Emergence of new travel destinations. Interestingly, a lot of, lot of options are opening up for the Indian traveler. They are very savvy. They are very technologically uh, clued in. They are, they are very, very good at getting information about travel options. So you can see Bali is opening up. Philippines is getting popular. Sri Lanka has got a resurgence of travelers from India. Uh, Japan, they have announced a uh, JNTU uh, opening up the office, they have engaged VFS and they are, they are across India and for the longest of time I was thinking that uh, Indian vegetarian diet considerations may make Japan a, a, a tricky sell but hey, they are telling me they've got fantastic Japanese options and the Indians are loving it. So Japan is again a flavor of the month, they are getting a huge traction in India, a lot of interest, numbers are slowly going up. 2017-18. Four strategies that, that I've placed for the team. First, partnerships, deepening, expanding, and experimenting. Second, how do we penetrate a tier two cities? Sustaining a pipeline of tourists to Singapore. Third, cruise, we need to grow the awareness first, as cruising as a holiday option, and then travel out of Singapore. Uh, BTMI is growing the incentive movements and shaping the travel experiences. Let me just take you through quickly the point by point. Partnerships. We want to continue engagements with the key partners, so we are looking at strategic partners across pan-India. So we will work with partners like Thomas King and Make My Trip. Airline partnerships will continue to be very important, so the Singapore Airlines, uh, Scoot and Tiger, which is in the room, Surya, uh, and so on and so forth, right? So partnerships is very, very important uh, across. What I'm very, very particularly keen for this year and moving forward and trying to sort of reshape the idea of partnership is, can we do non-travel trade partnerships? So I'm looking at payment channels, I'm looking at telcos, I'm looking at banks. If I can secure one of the bigger boys, then I've got to reach into a, watch, a much wider space, right? Tier two space, tier three, tier three cities even. So that's something that we are looking at, expanding and deepening and exploring or experimenting with some partnerships. Tier two, um, Partners who are strong in their regions, we want to work with them, right? Whether it's Gainwell in Calcutta, uh, we've got Travel Tours, uh, Sh uh, Shravan is from there, he's very, very strong in the south, and so on and so forth. And what's important is, for this tier two cities, we are also now starting to say, do we need to go vernacular? Is, is it Tamil in Tamil Nadu? Is it uh, uh, Gujarati, right, in, in Ahmedabad? So, uh, going vernacular may be something that we need to seriously consider, and this is where we will have to look at partners, uh, both in Singapore as well in market. 
to, to uh, dance with us for this, right? Business development, uh, we're looking at B2B platforms, tier two cities. We'll be opening up, uh, we will continue our roadshows which are hugely useful. Uh, and the Singapore Travel Trade feedback has also been, it's very, very helpful for them to connect. So we'll continue that and we will work closely with airlines in the tier two cities. Air connectivity, we are very well connected. 15 uh, points from which Sing uh, Singapore can be reached from India. And what's in interesting is all the names of, apart from the Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, Chennai, you've got Amritsar, Jaipur, Lucknow in the north, you've got Calcutta in the east, Ahmedabad in the west, and then you've got uh, Coimbatore, Hyderabad, Kochi, and so on and so forth. So 230 plus weekly flights, huge opportunity for, for visitors coming into Singapore. Cruise, we will continue our tripartite partnerships, cruise lines, Singapore attractions and travel trade. Uh, we will collaborate with media titles, Lonely Planet, the supplement is coming out in June. It's a major supplement. Uh, we will have a lot of content about uh, cruising in there. Uh, we will promote ship charters. Last year, we had the uh, privilege of having Tirun doing uh, charters for Royal Caribbean, Arc Travels doing charters for Star Cruise. And with Genting Dream coming on board, uh, this year, we are also figuring out how can we promote Genting Dream because it's a huge ship. It's a lux luxury ship and it's very important that we make it succeed being home ported in Singapore. So there will be B2B engagement sessions. We will continue with our cruise forums. I'm also looking at whether we should try and do a, a consumer-facing cruise uh, engagement, learning from uh, Park Raymond, uh, Guru Raymond, because what he's doing in Indonesia is fantastic. And some of those, whether it's the road shows he's doing, which is consumer targeted or the cruise shows, I think we can learn from that and hopefully not reinvent the wheel, but uh, ride on the coattail of Park Guru's master strokes. All right, so we'll try and do that in India. Clear, we, are, we have to make Clear succeed in India. More, more agents have to sign up for the training. And that's how maybe we can uh, upskill the, the, uh, the competencies of the people who are selling cruise. BT Mice, we will collaborate on media partnerships and that's one way of doing that. So um, uh, we are doing a major partnership with Business Traveller and NDTV uh, coming out, rolling out in the next few months. Business development, we will work with Mice intermediaries, we will cultivate corporates and we want to increase awareness of uh, the MNI offerings that Singapore has. Upcoming market initiatives. So this one you can take pictures because it's very important that you know the dates. Um, tier 2 City B2B. Right, I was contemplating of shifting it to September for, for obvious reasons that we are going to have something important happening in the second half. But our dear friends in the travel uh, uh, trade have told me, hey, don't, 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 don't push to September. That is, <laughs> Susan is saying, no, 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 no. So I'm sticking with July. So as I promised during the last roadshow, we will do a ro uh, Colombo plus six cities. So these are the six cities we are going to do. Ahmedabad, Chandigarh, Hyderabad, Kolkata, Lucknow and Pune and Colombo. Dates are 10th to 21st of July. There may be plus minus one day because I'm trying to see whether I can squeeze in all the seven cities. Uh, and the roadmap, it will be a yatra of sorts. So you guys have to figure out who's going to come for which lake. Uh, uh, there will be a participation in MILT, uh, Meetings and Incentives Luxury Travel. That's happening in July uh, in Mumbai and Delhi. Again, if a couple of you may be interested to come and see the place and uh, have a sense. How many of you go for MILT, by the way? Just a quick show. Anybody goes for MILT? Not yet. Okay, think about it. Uh, so it's a meetings and incentives luxury travel platform. Very useful. Uh, Singapore product sales training. We are trying to go straight to the frontliners. We are saying, look, we need to go where the customers are having their touch points. So we are trying to figure out how can we do this directly with the frontliners. So we are doing training in these four cities and during this period. We are figuring out a way whether we need some of the Singapore stakeholders to come down and join us so that we can better sell and better educate the, the, the sales force. Uh, so we will be in touch with some of you uh, very soon. Uh, B2C Singapore-centric show in Bangalore to, to sell our Singapore products and experiences, including cruise packages. So this is the first one we are trying to experiment, a consumer-facing show uh, in Bangalore sometime in September. A mega m &I trade and corporate engagement. Okay, this one is an idea that we are toying. So this one needs the support of CAG or an airline partner, whether it's SQ or JET. Uh, if I can get all the stars aligned, then we are thinking of bringing down about 80 to 100 uh, corporate and MICE intermediaries to Singapore so that they can better appreciate the MICE facilities and MICE experience in Singapore, right? And Metro Cities B2B, uh, which is in Feb 2018, and finally we will do our Sate in Feb 2018. Thank you very much, and that's our 
Tabla carried an article why Indian tourists love Singapore. We coincidentally had Begin Your Endless Love Affair with Singapore. We look forward to your continued participation so that we can grow their love for Singapore. Thank you very much. So welcome again, our distinguished panelists. Um, I'm just going like, to invite you to maybe start off, uh, you know, maybe a short spill, your, your opinions uh, about the potential of Tier 2 cities in your markets, uh, your take, your general insights uh, to share with our audience in Singapore. Perhaps since Shravan, you have the mic, maybe you'd like to <laughs> start off. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you, Sridhar, Edward, and the whole uh, team for uh, inviting me here. Uh, Singapore has a very uh, a favorite spot in my heart, uh, also because we've been a PSA for Star Cruises for over 15 years, mm -hmm. and it has been one of the engines that has driven the growth of our business. So uh, I owe a lot to Singapore and the cruise business. Uh, before we get into a conversation about the Tier 2 uh, opportunity, I thought I'll just uh, uh, share some facts. Uh, you know, you said India is the second most populous uh, country in the world. Uh, yes, we are with about 29 states and seven union territories. But it will be interesting to note that 10 states out of these contribute 75% of India's GDP. Another interesting fact, by 2020, uh, it's projected that there will be around 250 million upper middle class families across India. Now oh, that's a huge number. A third fact, uh, in, in a recent survey done uh, for domestic air travel within India, it was found that only 25% of domestic air travel comes from the metros, and 75% comes from other cities. So it's very obvious that there's this huge tier two uh, opportunity in India. But can we? put all these tier two cities into one basket and say, you know, let's have a tier two strategy. Uh, no, you cannot. Because each, and like Sridhar uh, very clearly put up in one of his slides, each city and each region has its own mm. character. So one has to take a very localized and uh, informed approach before going into one of these markets. So at Flight Shop, we follow a business partner slash franchise type route, wherein we take uh, a local partner who understands that area, who has a deeper social network in that area, and we can talk about all this a little more uh, uh, as we uh, start the conversation. But you know what's interesting to note is that we need a unique approach for each of these tier two cities, and it cannot be one uniform uh, formula. So okay. that's kind of my few uh, words about it. Yeah. So localized and informed approach. Yeah. But there are many, many states in India. So yeah. maybe there, I think later on there'll be questions on how localized and what sort of resolution do we go into. Um, but maybe we'll save it for later. Perhaps I could invite um, Ibu Francisca to maybe share with the audience your views on Surabaya and secondary cities in Indonesia. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you to, uh, to thank STP uh, for inviting me here and uh, uh, for giving me the opportunity to share what we uh, the tier two cities have in mind. Uh, basically, actually, uh, Pak Raymond has uh, given presentation earlier. He has almost all uh, all. Uh, what we have in mind. So actually, Paramon is, is already has our mindset. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but just to add from uh, uh, our point of view, um, many of my customers uh, are families. Uh, they are uh, most of them are young families, and uh, they like to see Singapore as the the closest country. And uh, they like to go here for for a short break with the family. Uh, sometimes also during the the school holidays, and even uh, when you see the the data from from Pak Raymond, uh, why December increased so high? Uh, from my perspective, it's uh, just because they keep on delay the holiday, 
and until uh, very last minute, then they, they find a good deal on Singapore, then let's just go to Singapore. Go to Singapore. Everybody going to Singapore. So uh, increase. That is for, for my market. Yeah. Um, another uh, good thing is just uh, those Indonesians with the uh, new passport, they like to go to, uh, of course, the first, the first country to go is Singapore. And uh, taking for my data, uh, just this year, I already issued uh, more than, more than 4,000 air tickets going to Singapore starting January. So all of these people, they will look for accommodation, they will look for attraction, they will come to your country and they will, they will of course, spend in your country. So if you can just help me, uh, give me uh, any, any uh, good deals for them, then they will, they will of course come. <laughs> yeah, uh, of course, majority of them, um, they, are, they have a quite limited budget. So let's say uh, if they see a good deal of, a, let's say, three, four star hotel with a range about um, one million or a bit less than one million, or a bit up uh, than 1 million, let's say 1.2 maximum. So uh, they're interested. So hotels nearby the uh, eateries and shops, they're interested. Nearby the MRT stations, things like that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, uh, they like it if they can do installment. So uh, we like to partner with banks. And the, big, the biggest bank is BCA. Yeah, I think mm. that would be all for me. Okay, yeah. thank you, Bill Francisca. A lot yeah. of last-minute decision-making and looking for a good deal. So later on, please exchange your name cards with uh, Ibu Francisca and <laughs> tell her what kind of good deals you have. Um, so, and now we have uh, Chinket. Chinket, you have a view of the world, but can we request that you also give us your, your take on Indonesia and India? And, uh, thanks, Edward. And again, thanks to STB for letting me participate on this uh, wonderful event. Uh, so just a very quick introduction of what we do. I'm in charge of uh, Air Hub Development at Changi Airport. So we have uh, one team that works very closely with SCB and uh, travel agents on in terms of uh, promotion and uh, demand uh, stimulation. Uh, there's another team also that works with uh, airlines. So my responsibility is to get new airlines to come to Singapore, as well as working with the current airlines to see how to grow the supply side and to grow to new destinations. So maybe that was a, that's, that's one of the angles also that uh, maybe we haven't talked about so far. Because uh, from the airline side, I think historically for China, India, Indonesia, we also see some uh, uh, stimulation. Whenever an airline puts on capacity, the traffic, there will be some stimulation because now it becomes easier to visit Singapore. Then naturally, some of the, the growth will be uh, stimulated in the near term. So I think the, from the airline's perspective, they are also looking at, uh, new cities at uh, tier two cities because some of the metros, both in Indonesia and India, uh, quite a fair bit of competition. So they are also keen to be the first mover to look at uh, tier two cities. So I think that's one way for you to find new opportunities. Mm -hmm. Because for airlines, when they add new flights, they will be also very hungry to fill up the flights. So that's where you can possibly uh, get a better cooperation and deals with them. And uh, the other angle is also to look at some of the foreign airlines uh, which have. The, the, I think top of mind, of course, here is working with the Singapore-based carriers like Tiger and SIA. But I think of late, if you notice the last 6 uh, to 12 months, a lot of the Indian uh, airlines have been adding flights or increasing their capacity. So uh, that is another trend that uh, you can uh, take note of uh, for your, some of your opportunities. Thanks. Thank you, Shinkit. Um, so a lot of Indian airlines adding capacity and new, new flights. So that's more opportunities for us. Um, usually in most sessions, we have challenged getting the first question. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone has got the first question to ask our panelist. Maybe the second one. Huh? Maybe I'll start off with the first one. <laughs> Maybe I'll start off with the first one. Um, okay. Um, Ibu Francisca, you mentioned that a lot of uh, uh, people in Surabaya, last minute uh, bookings, so, is the, so are you saying that the travel decision period is a lot shorter as compared to Jakarta and, or is it, and for Surabaya, if it's very short, is it the same for Medan, uh, this, uh, this is Samarang, or is it dependent on the destination they're going to? Yeah. 
we are very much uh, price driven. So uh, decision is made based on the promotional right. promotional right. rates. Sure. So mm -hmm. we will come to uh, whichever we will book during during whichever travel fair or whichever or whatever places that has the lowest deal, the the best deal. So um, this year and the, this past uh, few years, we have so many travel fairs. Even earlier this year, already how many travel fair? Yeah. Right. So um, uh, I I noticed that that the the lead time is getting shorter and shorter. Yeah. I see. I see. Okay. Um, so is it is it the same for Jakarta uh, in comparison? It, yeah. It, it, so you're talking about Indonesia in general. Indonesia in general. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But uh, uh, what makes us different from from the people in Jakarta? People in Jakarta, they don't really have time to go around comparing prices. But here in the tier two city, Surabaya and surroundings, we have time. I see. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have time. We have time. <laughs> okay, sounds really good. I think we also have time after this session. Yeah. Um, okay, so. so I, sh I should be yeah. here in Surabaya office. Right? Uh, yeah, I should be staying there. Yeah, more time. <laughs> more time to think. <laughs> yeah, that's right, right, that's right. Yeah, you have a holiday tomorrow. Um, so maybe I could, uh, you know, move on to uh, Shravan. Yeah. Could you uh, unique consumer characteristics, let's say, people from Bangalore or people from elsewhere, as compared to, um, let's say, Mumbai and Delhi? Is, are, are there distinctive difference um, or are they very much the same? Just no, it's top quite, line. Yeah. It's a good question. Uh, there is uh, quite a significant difference between uh, you know decision making in the larger cities and in the uh, not so large ones. So in larger cities, they are open to more. Uh, they are exposed to more things. So decision making is uh, faster, and they decide based more on experiences. Uh, in the tier two cities, a lot of it depends on uh, word of mouth. Uh, influence. So I'm, there are always people within the social circle who will influence somebody to either uh, go to Singapore or somewhere else. So there is a lot of uh, discussion within the family, friends, before a decision is made. Whereas in larger cities it is, I feel like going somewhere, I'll, I'll go and they don't care much about uh, what other people would do. I see. Yeah. I see. Okay. Now before I Move on to a question for Chinket. Is there any third question for the panelists? Um, Surya is the first one. Surya, you're dying to ask a question. Then after that, Irene can ask the question. This is how we generate some questions. No, this is uh, Come on, a mic. Do you have a mic? Come. Come. This is for Pak Raymond. Uh, you have mentioned about interesting figures about MNI traffic out of Indonesia. Can you give a f uh, split of how this traffic is coming from tier two markets versus tier one market like Jakarta? Because from an airline point of view, if you split the capacity, the overall capacity of tier two markets is is equivalent to tier one markets. But the split is not fairly shown in the MNI split, MNI numbers. So. From STB point of view, what would be the fair share, and where are the growth points with from tier one cities or tier two cities? Um, generally, the generally the M and I traffic, the meeting incentive traffic, actually are coordinated out from Jakarta. So uh, where they go is actually determined by the headquarters in Jakarta. But a lot of this distribution, like the uh, like the auto, the auto distribution, the pharmaceutical dis distribution, they are all over Indonesia. So uh, the groups are picked up from from different cities, but the nerve center is in Jakarta. The decision point is Jakarta. That's why a lot of my uh, MNI traffic, when we go and uh, try to influence decisions, we will go to Jakarta headquarters. The corporate, we convince them. Um, so far, we do we do have some groups that actually generate uh, originate out from the second tier C two cities, but those are an exception. So I can't really tell you where the growth is between them, 
But certainly, uh, Singapore is among one of the top considerations for most corporates thinking of going for a trip that's easy, that they know that when they send a group, they will not be disappointed. Because while there are many groups which will still go to Europe, I think those are the higher end, that's where we cannot compete in. But once they look at regional, that's where we will come in very aggressively and say that you will not be disappointed. In fact, you will be more delighted than what you actually get from the from the price point that they're actually paying because we have very full confidence of all our DMCs in Singapore who are able to deliver the job purely from efficiency, uh, ease of programming because things get put together very fast, very quickly and we always rely on uh, this hygiene level that we are very trustworthy. We do not cut corners. So those are the things that uh, put us in a very good position even when competing with a destination like uh, maybe Phuket. Phuket, maybe price point wise, definitely beat us hands down. But there are other things that we know that we are there. Uh, we just, NTO like us, just need to go in, do our song and dance, dish out some of our goodies and make sure that they decide. Yep. So that's how the game has been played. Yeah. Okay. And Shrita said there's a burning question from... Irene. I'm being sabo. <laughs> Hi, I'm Irene from Resort Sua Sentosa. Um, okay, Resort Sua Sentosa actually have a lot of uh, premium products, Michelin restaurants, uh, suites and um, top-end uh, accommodation. I think not only for Resort Sua Sentosa, but Singapore as a whole also have a lot of uh, premium um, products and services to offer to both Indonesians and Indians. So my question is, how can we reach out to this group of customers? Um, I think, uh, I, I, I'm not sure, I think we are facing a bit of challenges here because when I hear like uh, Ibu say that Indonesians go for cheap, cheap, you know, value for money <laughs> kind of products, but how can we actually reach out to that, that tier of customers? Okay, I see a lot of imaginary hands wanting to ask questions, but I'm going to ask mine first. Okay, now it's for Chinkat. Um, just now, Shravan mentioned that there's a lot of uh, opportunities in... Uh, yeah, in you want to answer this question yeah. first? I didn't question. I didn't question. Oh, sorry. I thought there was... Uh, no, yes, please, of course. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, so uh, I maybe, maybe I'll just give my, my take first, then uh, uh, invite Riemann and Shravan. So I think the question is, uh, how do we cater the premium experiences and uh, what we consider maybe expensive experiences to, uh, to a target segment? So whether it's India or Indonesia, a bottom line statement. Statement number one, they like, they are very price sensitive and they like cheap, uh, cheap or inexpensive deals is a across the board fact. That's a seven number, fact number one. Fact number two, there are enough Indonesians and Indians who do not mind paying more as long as they consider it is good value for money. So the challenge both of us will have is how do we reach out to these segments and tell them that, hey, Singapore does offer very good value for money. And whether it's India or Indonesia, my, my sense and my suspicion is they are not only in the metros. So for example, in India, Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, Chennai are just the four metros that we say key, key tier one cities. But actually, if you talk to Shravan, he will say, hey, Calcutta is also tier one for them, Hyderabad is also tier one for them. Right? But even if you don't include them and plus Ahmedabad and so on and so forth, in all of these cities, there's a huge segment of people who are willing to pay. So I think our challenge is uh, going to that segment. But accepting the fact that we, when we do mass uh, uh, co communication on what Singapore stands for, what are the tourist offerings that we have, we have to cater to, to the whole range. Right? But the premium offerings, I think there's enough, uh, enough segments and and even verticals, working millennials, families, even among all, of, all those verticals, there are enough travellers who would want to come and spend if they are convinced it's good value for money. Maybe I just ask uh, others to add on. Sure. Yeah, just to add to uh, you know, what either just mentioned, I think India has a very young population and a lot of young families with you know, smaller kids. So I think Singapore is ideally suited for that. And all these people would come for a longer stay they would like to spend, you know, because they're saving uh, in terms of traveling to a, uh, a nearby destination. They would like to spend on experiences. So the important thing is to communicate that, yes, we have all these things available. Uh, so there are takers and uh, they will spend, but we need to tell them what 
uh, is available. Uh, for Indonesian market, uh, of course, we do have people who's willing to spend more. But uh, as uh, Srita just mentioned, it is, is very true that they're looking for uh, the best deal. So um, actually, they have the money, but then they still look for the best deal. So uh, if we can just advertise, uh, make it up, make it make make uh, assure them that they 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 have the best deal uh, of your product, then they they of course they will buy. Yeah. So for example, and Shravan Surya and all who can. In India, there's this term called Paisa Vasul. And Paisa Vasul is extracting the maximum amount within that one Paisa they're going to spend. Right? Maximum. You must, you must, you must do that until the blood comes out, you know? <laughs> paisa Vasul. And this is a cross. Whether, whether you're rich, whether you're middle income, they want that Paisa, that, that the best deal. And I think that's, I don't know whether there's an Indonesian word for it, Raymond, you have to think of something, but... <laughs> But they, they want that. And so, for, for example, if you are able to convince, USS is so popular now, right? And Flower Dome and, and Gardens by the Bay, I'm told, Cloud Forest, they're also having a lot of Indians going in. Why? They think it's good value for money. They're willing to pay and they're going to come in. So it's our, our responsibility to try and educate and convince all our travelers that, hey, this is a very, very good value for money. You want to shaking your head. You got a question you want? No? Okay. So just let me add a comment. Just specific for the, for the India market. I think in some cases, it's also the idea of perceived value. Uh, I mean, CAG, we run, at Changi Airport, we run a few promotions. Huh? One of it was what Raymond mentioned earlier, for, in terms of shopping voucher at Changi, we give that to the passengers. And we also have a program which we collaborate with uh, STB, that is a free transit tour. So for passengers who are transiting via Changi, if you have a stopover more than five hours, you can do a free bus tour to downtown to Singapore. So when we did some focus group uh, in India uh, on shopping voucher versus a free Singapore tour. Actually, India in particular, predominantly would pick the free tour. The perceived value of the free tour seems to be more than the $40 uh, shopping voucher that we can give. So now for some reason, only, right? huh? it depends on season, oh. uh, season <laughs> promotion. <laughs> so anyway, so the perceived value seems to be quite high. Even to us, is uh, we market it as a free tour, but the idea of having a free tour perceived value seems to be quite high. So I think the packaging, I think that's, uh, it makes a bit of a difference. Just to add on, um, maybe because uh, when RWS first started, USS was synonymous to RWS. So the theme park itself became the mainstay of going to RWS. So uh, in, in Indonesia, I think two key attractions, just like in India, is USS, it's gardens. These two are very, very, very popular. In fact, for most of the incentive trip, these two are somehow or another inside the itinerary. So I think it's also a perception because right now you're trying to drive the value up, uh, which most people still relate USS as a family destination. So that, that little bit of uh, alignment needs to be done. So I'm not saying that those uh, products in your uh, resort uh, are out of the budget, but I think you need to, you know, deliver them uh, to the customers in a different way because it is stuck, USS, USS, yeah, so. I think the term Paisa Basu is quite interesting, eh? as in uh, squeezing everything out of something, right? <laughs> Sounds like a Singaporean trade. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, it's universal. Uh, universal. Yeah. Ah. Japanese Indians have a name for it, right? We have Kiasu. Like <laughs> Shravan mentioned just now that 75% of domestic air travel is from tier two cities. And uh, I think we're quite well connected to India and Indonesia. I think we've got 15 direct flights to India and 13 direct flights to Indonesia. So I wanted to ask Chinkat, you know, how, how much more can we expand? I got some data that suggests that there are 46 cities in India with a population of more than 1 million, about 10 cities in Indonesia with a population of more than 1 million. The, the potential is uh, immense, but how more can we expand in that sense. Yeah, I think my CEO wants me to extend quite a bit more. <laughs> I think there's opportunity. I think it's two ways. Huh? One is new cities. Of course, we are still constantly, uh, we, there are still many, many places we are not linked to. So to be honest, like uh, let's say in Indonesia and Sumatra, we are still 
uh, places that, let's say Padang, for example, is a big, uh, big uh, commercial center, population center. We're still not linked there. So there are some of these points that are all in India, Bubuneshwar, Pune, Madurai. I mean, the list goes on. Uh, there are opportunities there. But uh, I think New City is just one of the, the, the focus that we are on. I think for other cities, which let's say tier two or tier three cities, which we think that there isn't enough capacity, we would also try to encourage the airlines to add more capacities, huh? especially when there's less than the daily flight, less than seven times a week. We think that that can be added in, more, more flights can be added in. And where indeed the flights added in, we do see the traffic coming up quite strongly. So like in Indonesia, uh, over the last 12 months, uh, just start added flights to uh, Palembang and Pekambaru, double digit growth uh, quite, Quite, uh, quite, quite strong. 35%. So are, yeah. So those are quite, uh, quite, quite. Uh, those, that's another area of focus. So it's beyond just adding new points, but also thickening the existing points, or even in cases, adding a better product. So uh, Jet Airways has been progressively upgaging their Delhi Mumbai flights from narrow body into wide body. So that's, that's the tricky part, where it's five plus hours, although narrow body aircraft could technically reach. A white body aircraft, some passengers may find that it's more comfortable. Uh, so that also brings about uh, opportunities uh, to bring in more uh, tourists. So it's uh, all the factors we, are, we are keen to, to explore. Okay, can we open up to the floor for some questions for our panelists? We still have some, not a lot of time, just about 10 minutes. Yesterday when we were having a conversation over dinner with our panelists, uh, they were suggesting that um, domestic travel is actually quite expensive. Uh, also, I think, I, I'm not sure if I did share when I was living in Shanghai, traveling to Korea is actually cheaper than sometimes going to other places in China. And I think Shravan and Ibu Francisca, I think for Indonesia and India, I recall that you also mentioned this, the situation is similar. So that, I suggest that, I, I think that is an opportunity for us as in Overseas travel is actually, in terms of pricing, that is, can be seen as to be some value. Is that, is that true? Um, just to confirm that. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. very true actually. Uh, because um, like the airfare, in our domestic airfare, it's actually uh, sometimes more expensive than uh, our airfare going to Singapore. So um, that's why uh, for my corporate clients, many of them switch from domestic destinations to Singapore. Singapore is the country, the first country they, they have in mind when they decide to switch from a domestic destination to uh, uh, outbound. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. That's good news for us. Yeah. Good news. <laughs> Shraf, is that the case for India? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Bali. Uh, I think uh, the perceived value of going to an international destination is obviously far higher. So by paying a little more, if I can go outside of India, uh, so that is uh, obviously more preferred. And for people from tier two and three cities, uh, you know, in a recent uh, survey done, uh, amongst the top three things on their list, the first thing is to buy their own house. <coughs> and the second thing is to go abroad. You know, and so buying a car and stuff is later down the line. So it's, you know, we grow up with this idea of wanting to go outside of India. So I think uh, it, it's, it's definitely a huge opportunity. Right, yeah. right, okay. Anything to add, Raymond, Shrita? <laughs> I was just remarking to Chinkia that huh? if we know names in the audiences, they get called out. <laughs> so I think, uh, I, Faber Peak, uh, Susan has got some question. <laughs> Susan, I, I can see you from behind the pillar, dying to ask a question. Huh? Anything? How? Anything? No. Okay. Maybe just a, just a comment. Uh, for some of our uh, incentive groups, uh, many a times we're actually competing against Bali. Yeah. Yeah. Bali is always up on the on the radar for most corporate groups. So, and the airfare from Jakarta or from various cities to Bali isn't very far away from some of the uh, attractive airfare that the um, uh, the regular airlines are able to offer for for group for group travel, so there lies the opportunity. Yeah. So a little bit of help from STV goes a long way in influencing uh, uh, decision making. Yeah. 
I think maybe just just some some uh, concluding remarks. So A, um, the four metros for for India, Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, Chennai contribute about thirty five percent to forty percent of my full VA into Singapore. So can you imagine about sixty percent is out there from all the other cities? So fact number one. Point number two, it is much easier now to connect with tier two cities. Maybe 10 years ago, all of us were contemplating, how do you go to Hyderabad? How do you get into Kochi and Madurai and so on and so forth? But now, it's, it's a lot easier, right? And we have taken a partnership model, uh, and, and, and in Raymond's case, they have taken a roadshow model, which we are doing, which is at the moment trade-facing, but I need to figure out whether how we can make it into a consumer-facing. But this is giving all the partners here a reach into the cities, right? which otherwise you may have some difficulty, right? And partners like Flight Shop and Travel Tours now, they are pan-India, they are very strong, Travel Tours very strong in South, Flight Shop is getting very aggressive in all the other parts. And the partners we have picked, Thomas Cook, Make My Trip and so on and so forth, have got this resolution to get into uh, multiple cities. And if I could uh, land a, a telco or a bank partner, which I'm hoping that we will do it this year, then there's an even wider reach to getting our messaging up. So that's, that's the second reason that if we can get our act together, the communication messages are clear, what's a value proposition, then I think we can sell it much easier to the tier two cities. And, and it is not so difficult in both countries because India and Indonesia, just like I can use why Indians love Singapore, that same tagline can use why Indonesians love Singapore. Both countries got a very good affinity to Singapore. So how do we leverage it uh, and, and make it happen that the visitors are coming and we can give them a very authentic, happy uh, experiences in Singapore. So, huge opportunities. STB is signaling strongly that we would like to build a sustained pipeline of tourists from the tier two cities. So I think uh, if we can all work together, there will be very, very uh, uh, impactful business opportunities for all of us. Anything to add from Shravan and Chinkin? Nothing to add, but uh, I think it's something that we discussed uh, last night, and I, I don't think it came up in the conversation, is about uh, how children are, you know, helping make, uh, you know, the holiday decisions. And I think it goes back to my earlier point that India has a lot of young families. So I think it's, it would be uh, useful if you could think on the lines of, uh, you know, how do we communicate that it's, there are so many things for, uh, you know, families to do here. And how do we reach the uh, the children who are now more and more, uh, uh, you know, influencing the yes. next holiday? I remember you were saying that uh, kids as young as seven to eight are asking to be brought to Japan or certain yes. specific Absolutely. destinations, yeah. Paris, yeah. and you wonder why Paris. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what have they, have they been uh, doing, Edward? Yeah. Jakarta and perhaps uh, Mumbai, do you s still have the budget or able to work with us to promote our trade shows in Singapore? Uh, my jewelry show, we used to uh, work with your Jakarta office to reach out to the high net worth uh, travel agents perhaps to bring them to Singapore for my jewelry show in July. And then perhaps uh, Srida, is it? I have my architecture building show in August, uh, October. Uh, are you able to help me to invite uh, targeted audience like architects, contractors, real estate developers that we could invite them to Singapore to uh, visit our trade show? I think MICE is one of the important uh, uh, pillars of our tourism. So I think if uh, STB could address these issues a bit more, uh, we'll be happy to uh, start our campaign to bring in uh, more visitors to Singapore. Thanks. Thank you. My boss always tells me if there's a good project, don't worry about no budget. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah. 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 So, so the starting point is whether is there a good project, is it worthwhile to chase after, then we think about the budget. Yeah. So the first part was to convince. So, so my answer to you, yes, definitely we can consider, so we need to Get more, get more information from you. Um, I think back many years ago, we do have a premium plus strategy uh, going after the high U, high net worth uh, customers. 
I think we have not ditched that uh, strategy, just that we have cha we've changed our strategy a little bit. We go for quality tourism, so not necessarily high net worth, high yield. Uh, and we also must make sure that the, the base we address, that's why we are now going a lot into more destination branding, destination marketing, uh, to address that, uh, that, that big mass market, which we have uh, somehow or another um, not been doing enough in the past few years. So that's why in most cities, in most regional offices, you see all over in STB's operations, a lot of us, a lot of the markets are actually now doing a lot of consumer activities because I think we need to get back our, uh, our destination branding among our consumers beyond just doing advertising online. Yeah, so that touch thing needs to be uh, done more. I think, I think for, for India, definitely we could consider the, the primary co questions we have and we promote, say, Water Week or Energy Week uh, and then we try to bring in the Indian delegates. I think the primary question to ask is how can STB facilitate uh, and, and we need the Singapore players to know clearly who are some of the people that we need to reach out to and whether STB India has got a role in, in reaching out to them. Um, and if we can, of course, we can, we can help out in those. So I think for us to understand how do we do it best and what is the value that we can bring to the table? If we can clarify that role, then yeah, because we, we've got a MICE team in India to try and look at this so we can facilitate where possible. Thanks. Actually, the good news for us is that we've been winning a lot of M&I groups from Indonesia, from India. I think the very, very big groups and many, many groups. Uh, I think the pipeline is looking very healthy for us. I'm not even sure if we can, you know, you know, mix, uh, for example, have them attend a, a show as part of the itinerary, example, for example. It's huge volume. Um, yeah, so it's just one idea. I'm not sure if it's going to work. We've got last two minutes, um, your final chance to ask some questions. If you don't ask, you've got to wait for next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If not, um, I suppose maybe we can, you know, um, wrap up the session. Uh, we give you some time to exchange name cards with our panelists, and also maybe it'd be more comfortable for one-on-one -on -one, uh, interaction Q and A uh, with everyone. So, yes, I, we've got. I want to show the video now? Yeah, I think we've got time for yeah. a video. Actually, we have a roadshow video. What we did uh, in Medan, in Palembang, uh, Park Raymond. Can we show that um, roadshow video? It's, um, uh, this is a very... Okay, hey, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chinkiet yeah. and Shravan. Right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, round of applause for our panelists, please. Thank you.